Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Dave here, Scale Models Midwest. Welcome back to the workbench. Today's model cars and coffee entry is a little late because I was working on the kit this morning and I also got up late, but um, nonetheless, it's here. For starters, the model cars and coffee is being put on by Paul over at Left Coast Model Builds. Been out for a couple weeks working on some things at work uh, and at home. Uh, my mom's in the hospital, so we're just making sure she's taken care of and uh, got this buttoned up today. So. Just want to kind of take a minute or two to show you what I've done and then go from there. For starters, this is AMT's 2021 Ford Bronco and it's the first edition. Um, I actually like it. It's a big beefy Bronco. If you see these in person and then you put them upside say a 71 or 72 Bronco, you know the ones that was really classic design, they basically tower over what the 71 to 73 Broncos were like. Uh, I myself, I had an 84 Ford Bronco, which would definitely be bigger than this, um, especially with what all I had on it. But still, I do like Broncos. I think they're great run around and throw around vehicles. Um, but still, uh, I wanted to have a little fun with this one. So I thought, I, I've been painting different colors on my models and I do like color on my models. So this one I decided to do uh, Tamiya's Lacquer Mica Blue, it's LP41, and I have built kits and painted bodies before with this color, but this one, um, I'm going to just come right out and say it, not my best paint job, and not everybody's paint jobs are going to come out perfect, even airbrushed, they're not going to be perfect every time. You learn from them. So what happened with mine? Well, for starters, the paint went on fine. It comes out to a nice matte sheen. I did three coats of it and it looked good. I just kind of prepped it for the 2K clear. And again, I use the 2K clear from Scale Finishes. Fantastic product. My airbrush was all clean and ready to go. And as I laid it down, uh, I did not take into account the fact that while I was airbrushing the clear, we were dealing with 90 degree temperatures and then some here in Iowa sometimes the heat index being about 100 to 105 and it's humid so I think that contributed to some of that getting inside the house and while I was airbrushing the clear after the first two light coats it came out what looked like hail damage now I don't know if I'd say fish eyes but literally it looked like hail damage like this thing ran through an Oklahoma storm and just got hammered but I let it sit and figured, okay, see if it'll even out. Wasn't evening out. I didn't panic. I went on ahead and mixed some more clear, some more hardener, got that in there and lay down a third wet, heavy coat. It seemed to take care of some of it, but not all of it, obviously. So I let it sit for a week. This past Saturday, yesterday, I went on ahead and spent two hours sanding this, wet sanding it, cleaning it, from 1,000 grit all the way up to 12,000 grit, and it looks halfway decent, but I still see some model, uh, little hail damage, if you will, around the very top parts of the body. Um, and then one weird little thing popped up. You can't see it, probably in the camera, but right there on the right front fender, there's just a mismatch of color, and I didn't even see that when the paint went down. So I, looked at that and said okay well you know that happens and like I said so I'm still debating whether I use like a MIG wash or kind of like a, a mud wash to splash on the tires and the sides because I had an 84 Ford Bronco and that thing was rarely if ever clean I think the dirt and the rust held the body together does not come with an engine although I saw a picture of what Terry Adams built for his Bronco he put a big honking engine inside of his. I did have to sand down the edge of the front windshield for it to fit and even then it still hasn't fit completely right and I think it's probably because of the dashboard but it just seems everything went together fine so I don't know if that's me or if that's just the part but putting that together everything's fit fine but uh, just kind of watch out for that if you're putting this tape together watch out for that windshield but uh, ultimately, I like this is not painted. 
I like the white top. I think it goes well with the white grill. As you see there, I did that up. I've seen some Broncos in town that have the white grill, and I like those better than the black or the gray or even the body colored grills or chrome. Uh, it just it just looks sharp. The interior I did in three different colors. Again, I used my semi-gloss black. I used German gray and uh, flat black for interior panels. When you're working on this one, remember that the whole body that comes out there has this molded in and that's body color. So whatever color you paint the body, make sure you have that painted. I did have to mask all this stuff after I painted this all semi-gloss black and then after I masked that I was able to get the body painted in the blue and it turned out just great. Decals for the dash layout. Um, for the radio you'll want to sand the radio face before you put the decal on but otherwise it's a really nice kit. Builds up nicely and then underneath you have to on this one real careful when you're putting it together because the instructions tell you to snake this in and under the chassis to get to the transfer case and likewise with the exhaust you have to put it down and then around and snake it through the chassis and then finally the bottom part which would be the transmission plate uh, that has to go under but then over part of the chassis in order for this to fit proper uh, ultimately it did come out really well. It took me about an hour to put all that together but once it was in it was done it's solid nothing's fallen off and it's great. The only bummer was that <clears throat> the tires that come with the kit I think were just a little too beefy. I wanted to use these American Satgo tires that I've had for about 20 years maybe or more but when I put them next to this kit tires they are actually shorter so that plus the fact that it wouldn't fit into the opening. Um, I'll just have to use these for another truck kit someday. Uh, but otherwise, this one turned out pretty good. I did use some kit decals to hide some of the hail damage, if you will. But uh, ultimately, I like it. I definitely would build another one of these kits and I'd probably take out the plate in the engine bay and then put an engine inside of it. That's uh, another kit for another day. And with that, I'm going to go on ahead and get this buttoned up, get this up on the shelf, and then start breaking out a box of the next kit I plan on build. So with that, I hope you're building really cool kits at this time. Go check out some of those other model cars and coffee builds that are going on. And uh, there's another 48-hour group build going on. Quite a few people have been putting that one together as well. Hope you're having a great rest of the weekend. We will catch you in the next video.